In today's video, I'm bringing you a full art of scoring points guide so you can get the most value out of your primary and secondary mission scoring and score the most points possible in as limited time as you have inside your rewarded for 40k game. But before we get into that, I just want to say I'm back. For like the 40th time now, I've returned to YouTube to keep making consistent daily videos so you can learn Warhammer 40,000 tactics, strategies, and everything in between with as least friction as possible. And I know that I have been delayed. I've been making non-edited videos with small unit guides and all these little functional videos, but I'm fully back. I've got all the gear, all the equipment just to keep making these consistent, fully edited daily videos so you guys get the most value and, like I've said before, learn with the least friction possible. But in this returning video, I'm going to be talking about a full points scoring guide because, I'm going to be real, I see so many people playing 40k games with the 40k, with the couple of tens of 40k games we've been playing in the last couple of weeks, I see so many people prioritizing killing units, having board control, throwing their units in, having the most strategic reserves, and not scoring points, even though points are a fundamental importance to winning a 40k game, I still don't see people do it, and delaying how important actually scoring points is, and worrying either their units will die, whether than actually scoring more points. So, in this video, I'm going to be giving you a fundamental full guide of things I've learned about scoring points through primary and secondary that you can apply, and how to build a good fundamental plan on how you're going to score more points inside your 40k games. So, let's jump straight into it with, like, basically why points are important, and how you can implement them more inside your games. Yeah, there we go. Now, why points? See, Points are the fundamental, most important, measurable aspect inside of 40k. Better than the units are left on the board at the end of the game, better than the board presence you have in Battle Round 3, better than the, what freaking CP you have, points are the most important. And you need to screw this into your head, because people still don't understand this. Professionals, people who play, have played thousands of games, in probably just even 10th edition alone, still don't understand this. They prioritize things either killing or they get wrapped up on the idea of tabling their opponent when points are still the most fundamental key aspect inside of 40k. You need to wrap this around your head as fast as possible because it's what delivers the most. Now, 40k has two ways. Not two main ways, two other ways, two ways. Two core ways to score points inside of 40k. Primary and secondary. And now these two things can go hand in hand, but in most situations, they can be completely different things. And certain armies kind of function better with certain scoring mechanics other than other ones do. So, for example, Grey Knights work a lot better into secondaries, and Adeptus Custodes work a lot more into primaries. But you can build a certain list to work more fundamentally in a secondary or primary, but it depends on how you want to go. So, I would say that you need to understand that these are the two fundamental core ways and you need to kind of organize your army to build around a specific one, whether that be scoring a lot of secondaries or scoring a lot of primary. Now, I'm going to be going over both of these individually inside this video so you can basically make the decision yourself, but I would say this is the most important fundamental part of scoring in one 40 k is to understand if you're a primary scoring army or a secondary scoring army. And like I said, I'm going to be going over this in this video, so have no fear, you don't need to click off or anything like that. Now, you have to remember... In, this isn't just in 40k, any game. You need to win by one point. You need to win by one victory point. I have the recent mountain biking competitions I've entered in. The difference between 120th place and first place is literally two to three minutes. You might think it's like a whole 10 minutes or 30 minutes. It's two minutes. It's those two minutes that change the gap between first and, th and 120th. And it's like... 20 milliseconds that would take him from 120th to 100th. And then seconds off that to be 90th or 50th or 30th or 20th or anything like that. And that works the same with Warhammer 40,000. You need to win by one point. You do not need to stretch yourself to beat the opponent and absolutely wipe the board with 50-point victories, 70-point victories, 80-point victories. You just need to win by one point. So you do not need to have this extensive plan of, I'm going to absolutely just table him, and then I'm going to take all the points, I'm going to do this, you need to win by one point. You should always be having that one point mindset, saving as little, as, as little, as basically expending as little resources to win in the most effective way. If you needed to win by 20 points, different story. 
but you need to expend as least amount of resources into basically scoring points to get that one point victory than other ones. Now, yes, it can be comfortable to win by 10 or 20 or 30 points, but at the end, if it's a close game, you need to have as many resources as you can, and winning by one point isn't the worst thing. Now, like I said, I still see people prioritizing killing, board good presence, deep striking, and all that stuff, and they end up losing. They end up losing because, oh yeah, cool, I've taken most of your army, but I'm losing by 30 points by round four. It doesn't really work like that. So in this video, I'm going to be basically running you through the importance of scoring points like I have here, but more importantly, primary and secondary, and how you can decide which army best kind of suits your way and personality. So let's jump straight into it with what is primary scoring, and if your army might be a primary scoring army. Now, primary as a whole is probably the most core fundamental inside of 40k. It's the most not important, but it is a large scale scoring. It is a large scale intense scoring. It is what kind of wraps up your whole ultimate point and it's what you play through the primary mission. Now, as for scoring primaries, having board presence here can be a very effective measurement. What I would say here is that you need to select two no man's land objectives, not three, two. So this could be the center objective and the very far left objective, or the center objective and the very right far objective, or if you want to be an absolute pain, um, the very right, very far right objective and the very far left objective. Anything. As long as you have two points, you can take along with your home field objective. If you have these three, you're already outscoring your opponent by five, eight, three, wh whatever the scoring metric is in the mission you're playing, this can work. And you need to assign certain units this place. Now, this can become irrelevant. Having these having these three primary spot spots until battle round three until battle round three or battle round four can become irrelevant. They can become pointless based on the mission or army you're playing. You see, if you're playing like um what like supply drop like I actually played yesterday, where the alpha and omega objective is like kind of more important in the game, and you score like fifteen points if you have the omega objective, or whether you have the alpha who actually like leaves the game in battle round four, and the rest of the objectives move like get rid of them better around five you have to kind of work around this so if you're playing an army that's going to have like intense board control like Tyranids or maybe some gene stealer cult you kind of need to work around this and think with your brain i'm not going to tell you how you need to do this you need to think because i'm not going to be able to tell you every individual matchup and how it works i'm going to be giving you the basic information so this should be your main focus is just like to have two objectives in no man's land one in um one in your home field depending on kind of like what map you're playing, but best is to have one in your home field, and really focus on the idea of holding those until battle round three or four, and basically score as much points as you can in the round. Past battle round three or four, I would mainly say four, you can kind of ease the brakes up a little bit, and maybe like have a little bit more fun, score a little bit more secondaries, if you have a solid lead. If you're not, you need to keep holding that primary. And like I said, this can become irrelevant based on the mission or army you're playing, so you need to have some prior knowledge of your army or the mission you're playing, so you can kind of have some workarounds. If you, basically, if it's like a mission that takes away objective points, then you can only need to hold one. If it's a mission or an army that has intense board control, try to aim for just like, holding them down and keeping them away from the primary. If it's, a like I said, intense war control, keep them away from the primary. Now, what is annoying to me is that people in this sense, in this idea, when you have this ideology, okay, I need two primaries and one in my home field, people still are mad when their units die. And this is common. People don't like their units dying off the table. But once you get to some top-level plays, you'll see that people have their units dying all of the time. In terms, if it's scoring you points, let it die. If this scores you 5, 10 victory points and gets you at an 8, 15, 13 point lead, do it. If their fundamental core purpose is to die, their fundamental core purpose is to score, that is going to lead them to die. You're not going to have your entire army left on the board when you don't. Especially newer players, don't be scared to let your units die. Don't be scared to have your units fade away and throw out there for a sacrifice. Don't be scared. Because it, in turn, if they score you more points, than they d if, if their points value is more than the VP value you're scoring, that's perfect. So your ultimate, ult I don't mean like on a literal turn, I mean like, like the value of it. If you're getting that, it's amazing. So don't be scared to throw your units out there unless they're a potential killing unit. Unless it's like a massive knob squad, for me example, or if it's a big snagger squad, I don't want them dying, so... I just probably don't want them to send them out there just to die and get wiped by an entire Hearthguard 20-gun shooting phase. But in my Gretchens, 
they're fine. They can be sent out there. So don't be scared to have your like cheaper point units or maybe even a bit more expensive point units die to score you more points. This is uh, very important and very fundamental. Hold on, let me just move my you know face out of here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now, always read your primary mission. This can be the difference between you scoring zero points and you scoring 30 points. It's fundamental. You, this could literally be like, oh, at the end of battle round four, remove all the objectives like supply lines and the alpha objectives cause 15 victory points. When I read that, I was like, damn, I literally sent all my Gretchen, all my beast snaggers, everything onto the objective. And my opponent was like, oh, why are you doing that? Like, I'm going to kill the rest of your units. I was like, I don't care because I'll be in a 13 point lead by the end of this battle round because I've sent everything to the objective and your Chaos Knight can no longer hold it because it's like 10 OC to like 50 OC. So I found that a very functional way of basically basically making the most out of the situation. So always read your mission rule and focus heavily on that mission rule becoming your best. Now, the last little tip is that you need to assign certain units the idea of holding this objective. Your backfield, your objective one, and your objective two. Have maybe like a solid tight tanky high OC squad on that objective one, same thing on objective two, and then have like a nice expendable unit on your home field objective or a big shooter unit on your home objective so you can like still supply support fire, but not in that much sense. So have these units that are assigned here, have them so they're there, and then basically from that just keep on building off that. Keep making sure that you have those objectives by battle round three or four. Don't be scared to let your units die and always read your primary mission rule because what's fundamentally important to you scoring. So that is primary in a nutshell. Now if your army kind of isn't really a um like an expendable army, if you don't really have those 40 point, 50 point, 60 point models, I would say focus on primary. If you play custodians, I'm sorry, but you score no secondaries. You're not a secondary army, and you probably never will be a secondary army. So scoring primary is fundamental. So the best thing I would say is set up a plan. I'm going to score the left objective and the center objective, and I'm going to do it with X, Y, and Z units. These X, Y, and Z units are going to be on this, this, and that. And to do this, I'm, they're going to be a high OC tanky units. going to be able to tear through anything that's in front of them. So what I would say here, like I said before, sign units. Have the best intent if possible, and go from there. But that's going to be primary mission. Now let's move on to the secondary mission scoring inside Warhammer 40k. Now, secondaries. Secondaries are the side note to primary. I believe they are still important, but there is a reason they're called secondaries. They're not... I wouldn't say they're not meant to be scored, but they don't have as much internal presence as your primary mission scoring. But there are some armies that work fundamentally off scoring secondary, so still keep around. Now, secondaries are important as in terms you need to pick which one you're scoring. There are two kinds of secondaries. There's fixed secondaries and there's tactical secondaries. And you need to figure out what your army is working best into. Now, fixed tacticals are a little controversial in my opinion because there's only one way you take them. And that's if, if you can consistently max out that secondary every single round for like four or three battle rounds. If you can't do that, in my opinion, there's no point in taking them because it gives you too much risk into your opponent getting behind enemy lines, scoring, or not behind enemy lines, but like capture enemy out outpost, getting that eight victory points when you're here scoring two on bring it down. You need to have these objectives that you consistently score. So for example, if you have a massive board control like Tyranids do, cleanse, might not be the worst thing to just take fix because you can always hold those four quarters of the table. Or if you have um like a knights and your knights don't really need to move up the board too much, you could do cleanse. You could have enemies charging into you because you're such a tanky unit. You could fight back and do incredibly well. If you have like if your enemy is taking a bunch of characters and they're all attached to decently weak squads, and if you have enough CP to spend that penetration aspect on it. Take assassination. Fixed does come down to what army you're playing and what army you're playing against and what primary mission you have. If it all lines up, like I said, with the Tyranids and you're going up against maybe like a more elite army, having board control can be a very fundamental thing. It all comes down to what you're playing. So I wouldn't say design fixed outside of a game because you never know the potential the army could be taking. Whether that be the mission coming up and it being the wrong mission, army being a massive horde army and out, out kind of like out um, board controlling you or something other than that. So fixed is can be a little bit underwhelming in terms of you don't pick the right one. So what I would say is if your army 
He's very good at doing one thing. Like I said, if the Tyrion is with, like, hoarding a broad knight with, like, staying on the objective with, like, a huge toughness and massive OC and all that jazz. Or if you've got, like, behind enemy lines and you've got, like, a really high OC teleporting unit. Honestly, do it. Because in the end of the day, if you can max out the secondary more than the opponent can max out their tactical secondaries or their fixed secondaries, you're winning. So, if you can do that, do it. But if you can't max out the secondary, I wouldn't bother taking it or get very close to maxing it out. I wouldn't bother taking it because uh, ultimately, you're doing something that's not reaping the best of reward. So, if you do do something really well, always remember your enemy can take something different. So, keep that in mind. Now, as for tactical missions, this is usually what most people decide to take. This is what usually most people go for. As terms, it gives you more flexibility in terms of opening the game up a little bit. You don't really need to play in a certain play style. You don't really need to be anywhere. You don't really need to exist anywhere. And it kind of just opens you up to like, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be over there. Okay, well, now I've got this. We're going to move back. And it kind of opens you up to more freestyle of playing. But this can be a little bit down because the idea of tactical, tactical is that it's, it's mixed. It's always going to be ups and ebbs and flows. It's always going to be different creaks and crevices inside this. You could pull a really good card, and you could pull a really, really bad card. And this can fundamentally ruin your game. You can get investigate signals and cleanse when your army is so low on numbers that you physically can't do either of those, and you have to spend a CP to get that. And CP is also another crucial part inside of Warhammer 40,000. So, with tactical, I would say... Most armies are going to take this. If you don't meet the fixed criteria with a very, very specific linear kind of equation to having that, if you don't meet that very, very fine line of where you can take fix and still be perfectly fine and have a good chance of beating your own opponent, I would say just take tactical. Tactical is always a fantastic way to fall back on if you're looking at like, oh, my kind of things don't meet up, my things don't kind of orientate towards it. And if your army doesn't really work inside this fixed tactical, fixed missions, I would say just take tactical, go with tactical, because tactical will always 50-50 you and give you points you need to score. Now, because once you understand this, once you understand fixed and tactical, you now need to figure out what your army is playing into. You see, some armies work really well under fixed tacticals, who have a very set play style and a very oriented play style. A perfect example of this is Necrons. Necrons are a fixed play style, because what are they doing? Oh wow, they're sitting on the objective all game and not dying. What are they really good at? Not dying. Oh, that's cool. Cleanse. You can have these fixed tacticals inside of things like Necrons or another army that has a very fundamental core play style because they're not really going to change. They don't really need to be adaptable inside the game. They can just do their one thing. And if they're doing their one thing all game, you might as well capitalize on the thing they do best, which is sitting down and not dying or killing or doing something like that. So armies like the Necrons that have a very specific play style, I would say fixed tacticals work ri or fixed missions work very, very well. Tactical missions are for armies that do things like... Um, Tactical missions are for armies that have a continuous flexibility. So, for example, my orcs, they don't really have, they don't really do one thing very well besides like melee damage, but there's not really much melee damage you can do. So, having a large hoardy army that's very flexible can be very effective in terms of kind of like moving around the board, constantly having backboard presence, be able to get investigate signals, be able to get like um, deploy teleport armors, anything like that, it can work. It can work very well and it can work very effectively. So, having tactical for an army like that can work. So you need to figure out, is my army have a very fixed playstyle? Not funny, fixed. Do they have a very fixed playstyle or do they have a very tactical playstyle? Do they have a very kind of, I'm doing this, I'm always doing this, or do I have a, okay, I can do this, but I have a lot of more options to do that. Based on that, fixed playstyle, fixed missions. Tactical playstyle, tactical missions. Very easy, very simple. Now, once you figure this all out, you need to assign cheap units to this role. You need to have these cheap 40 point, 60 point, 50 point units who can just go out and send out and do those objectives. If you're doing fixed, different story. You need to have some hard hitting continuous units to continuously score you max points. But if you're taking tactical, you can send out your points for investigate signals. You can send out your deep striking 40 point units for deploy teleport harmers or something else or to capture enemy outposts or behind enemy lines or anything like that. You can do it. Have these units that are ready to go, ready to perform on this, and do really, really well inside of that. Now, hold on. I'm just going to do this real quick. Do this. Score more points. I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, how many times I'm going to need to say this. You need to score more points. Basically, understand how your army works. Do I score primary? 
do I score second goal? Once you've done that, do everything you physically can to score those points. If you have an enemy unit over there and you do not need to kill it, don't kill it. If it's going to cost you points, don't do it. There's no point in like kind of investing things inside of your army that's going to like potentially stop you from scoring points. So what I would say is if there's an enemy unit who's killing your units and you're not affecting your scoring, don't worry about it. Just do scoring. Focus on maxing out your fixed tacticals or doing as best fixed missions and focus as best you can on maxing out your tactical secondaries and then do your primary mission. Sit there with your two objective points in no man's land, your one in primary, and win by that one point. Follow all these rules I've just given you and you'll have a very, 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 very much more fun time scoring points at level 40k because you've got a plan, you've got a mission, and you know exactly how you're going to score points. But that's going to be all me today. I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. And like I've said before, I'm back ready to keep making these videos. So if you like this kind of style where I can like just zip around my, my face like this, leave a like. Tell me you like it in the comments. Tell me how you might find it more interesting. And give me a like or give me a dislike or tell me in the comments what you actually enjoy about my content and who I can improve on in the future. But that's going to be all me today and hope to catch you in the next one.